So hi, it's Bernie Gobach. I'm joined with Anna Carling Distal from Kilkenny. So I'm using a sway right now to just kind of run through. And what intrigued me, uh, uh, Anna Carling, is that I was interested in the concept of people who might be sharing things they see, not just with photographs or with journal items on the news uh, or on a blog or on Instagram, but instead through some kind of a structure that a heritage officer would, would use or somebody involved in culture would be intrigued by because of its rigor, pinpoint on a map. And I discovered you through a reference to a field archaeologist, John Tierney, who said, oh, someone is already doing open street map. And he pointed me to your work. You were using open OSM org. You were doing this stuff with Claude Mill. So during the Her Heritage Week of Claude Mill, you were able to, to jump in. And uh, so can you back up a little bit to the time frame when you were online with OpenStreetMap, Anna Carla, and explain to me what are these you did and how you got interested in it, in the OpenStreetMap? Yeah, so um, I think I started in 2012 <clears throat> when I was still living in Berlin. Okay. Um, and I was exploring Berlin on my unicycle and I wanted to make a map of uh, what cycling tracks are Okay. Like suitable for unicycles. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, it depends on your unicycling skill. Obviously, I wasn't right. very good, but um, like it's very difficult to go over cobblestones, for example. So I wanted to kind of create a, a custom map um, with like a color coded or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was looking into making maps, and I think that's that's when I started to just add features to OpenStreetMap. Okay. So OpenStreetMap is is often being called the Wikipedia of maps. So um, it's open source. Anyone with an account can add to it. Well, it's mm. different to Wikipedia as in that in Wikipedia, you don't have to have an account, but in OpenStreetMap, you do. Um, and adding features can reach from roads, um, which are mostly done in, in Ireland by now, um, to buildings, but even small features like power poles, or mm. it really depends on your interests. Like I have a, mostly a historical interest so i would add castles and um ring forts which you can usually make out on um, mm. on satellite view so we work with satellite views and um draw stuff over the satellite view basically mm. um yes and i'm also i'm a member of the kilkenny archaeological society so um I, I know who to ask if i don't you know if 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 i need sources I, yeah. there's people there i can ask I think it's really intriguing to, to, to take your passion and then to do something with it that's shared into a space that is digital. You're going from like an, an oral history or a small bit of information that someone knows about and maybe wrote about in a book, or you're going from a laneway that you've seen or the side of a building you discovered, and now you're sharing it in this OSM. So what I've had students do is walk around, well, actually follow me on a Zoom walk. So we like this is the town hall of Clonmel, which has a real historical interest. Uh, just as an aside on Caroline, the building used to hold all of the property records of Clonmel and it flooded several times. So there's there are many properties around South Tipperary where the council doesn't know there's been modifications made because there's no record of what the building used to look like. They, the, build, the banker's boxes were yeah. in the area below the wrought iron fence, the banker's box is full of paper records of the, of the uh, town, uh, of, of the properties in the town. So I, I've asked guys to kind of make a discovery point, uh, to actually share a discovery point on a piece of written content for a media writing course. But then beyond that, some people yeah. will share it by sketching a reference to it or annotating it in a way that has more than just a, a audible more than just one point of reference so like there are sounds streetscape sounds around certain things you can discover now you couldn't necessarily map that on a osm map but you could map the venue so for example years ago there would be sounds of crushers along the center part of town apples yeah. being crushed and there'd be the, the fragrance of that and there'd be the sound of horses drawing carts with the apples from the farm. And today, all that exists is like a small laneway called Dowd's Lane, which is going to be a discovery center for Magners about 
the way the Apple industry in Ireland first evolved. I think it's cool to be able to know that you could go from what you've done and actually discover some of this stuff. And one of the, one of the things I think is interesting to see is like how this, how what you've done can interact with a, a, a 3D map sequence. Walk me through what, what this is that I'm looking at. I, I think there's streets, I see buildings. I see some buildings that are colored. So how that happened? As okay. part of the Heritage Week project that we had uh, this year, we decided to, cho- to choose Clonmel because Tipperary is really badly mapped. So yeah. I don't know why that is. So we decided to choose Clonmel and to really do a really good job of mapping all the buildings and also mm-hmm. all the heritage sites we could find. So yeah. we, we actually went to Clonmel um, and yeah. put all the plaques that we could see, for example, on the map. I just saw there uh, in front of the town hall that there is a plaque that mm-hmm. might not be mapped actually because I, I overlooked mm-hmm. it. Um, and then I discovered, I think during Heritage Week or just after, I discovered that you can actually add 3D tags to OpenStreetMap. Uh-huh. So for a normal house, um, you can add the, the level of the building levels, the number of building levels, uh, which I did mostly in O'Connell Street and Irish Town. Okay. Um, well, that's where I started. I don't know and then whether you can add the color of the building. Okay, I don't know whether this shows up, but if I'm if you're seeing the 3D map I'm looking at, but I'm I've zoomed in on St. Peter. Yeah, and I, Paul's. I see Peter and Paul's now. Yeah. Did you did you color that? Is that your work? Yeah. So you can add the building color and the roof color. Okay. Yeah, so building color and roof color and roof material. I did don't think add, that's really rendered the material. Did and you add then the flags? some of the shapes. I mean, this is not perfect, but. Did you add the flags as well? Yeah, well, yeah, you just add flagpole. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you add flagpole and then it's just being rendered by that. Okay. Yeah. And for graveyard, it just renders random um, yeah. gravestones. It's not the, the actual gravestones, which you could also do on OpenStreetMap. So the f- different um, things that are on... If you just... go, I think it was, was it Parnell Street? Yeah. There are so, some, yeah. some trees as well. I see the trees. Yeah, and did you and put? You can define the height of the trees and the species and stuff like that, which I didn't do. Okay, so this suggests to me there are many buildings in Clonmel lacking color that people on this call could say, "Well, I'll, I'm going to color McCarthy's, or I'm going to put certain buildings with heritage features on this map." with the polygons with the street furniture or the trees or cemetery fixtures on the map yeah. and you did so is it fair to say that what's happened the colors that are on this map are most of the colors your colors or do you think other people have contributed to this map at at formap.com I think I was the only one doing colors. There were other people who defined the height of buildings and the roof okay. shape. It's really interesting. I mean, to and me, there used a... to be a plug. There, there. Yeah, there used to be a plugin for SketchUp that you could actually draw buildings in mm-hmm. and then import them into OpenStreetMap, but it was discontinued this July. So. Oh. I don't know if anyone's gonna t- pick it up again. This is really a shame. Because um, oh. if you look at, for example, oh. Berlin on the same map, you can see that um, it's much more detailed. So that's the interactive 3D map. Uh, you've done building references on it. And what I also thought you did was you created something. You, you created the view inside of a building that currently doesn't exist. Is that true? Did you modify uh, have you modified an, uh, a wiki type database with a structure of a building that currently doesn't exist? So I, I work in Rose House in, in Kilkenny. Okay. Um, part time, very much part time. Um, and during the first lockdown, uh, I decided to make a 3D model in um, SketchUp. Okay. Which I haven't used in a couple of years, but it comes back to you. 
Um, so, um, and I did some work in Roth House during lockdown in the library. So I, I had the key and I could go in and take pictures and then mm. take the pictures home and work from that. I, like I don't have a 3D scanner. I, so it's not precise uh, in, in scale or anything like that. Yeah. I just, you know. I'm looking at uh, another view here of osmbuildings.org. So it's a, that's a different data set, correct? No, it's the same data set. It's, it's all based on OpenStreetMap, but they render things a bit different. Like some, if you zoom in on Peter and Paul, they okay. don't do that, um, the onion shape, or they actually do it better, I think, than um, this F4 uh, map. Okay. So they have some some differences, like OSM buildings won't do trees and lampposts and flagposts and stuff like that. Okay. Um, it just does buildings. Can you explain to me how Heritage Council or how conservationists, archaeologists are using this digital tool set to bring heritage into this virtual space? And what's been okay. your experience? Is it just starting? Okay. <laughs> They mostly don't. Okay. And they haven't discovered OpenStreetMap yet, unfortunately. So they still rely on ordnance survey maps and they mm -hmm. pay for it when they could have it for free on OpenStreetMap. And we're trying, we as OpenStreetMap um, users and board members uh, yeah. are trying to, to promote it. Um, it's been around since 2012. Okay. Well, we have students who are listening to this conversation who might be intrigued about how to take what you've done and make it into something that moves on screen, either because of imagery they've created that they've animated or video or keyframes that they've made, if they snapped, and then they make it into a film clip, a short video clip. Could you walk backwards and tell me what you did with Lego or animation with any of this historical heritage work that you've done? Um, well, the, I did um, Lego animation for about a year or two mm -hmm. um, back in 2009. Not Nothing to do with heritage, really. No, but you see, if someone's going to do a discovery point, which is what I'm asking students yeah. to do, is like find something which has a unique view, perspective, heritage, or interest to them, and then adopt that thing. Write about yeah. it. Share an image or a thought about that street corner or that bit of masonry. For an animator's perspective, you could you could actually create basically a an animated walkthrough of places that, with the animator's imagination, look on screen like they might have looked for some bishop in the early 1600s, and that's a big deal to use your head, your imagination, and yeah, your skills. Yeah, even even just just the walls being rendered like they would have been. Um, yeah. It, it, so on our campus, we have game art designers who would do the kind of rendering. They could scan a cut piece of limestone and they could make that part of a data set that would allow you to build the structure with the exact yeah. kind of carving and the texture of the stone and the color scheme. Yeah. That the authenticity is important. So like if one of the students here in the call was listening to what, say, Kilkenny's cartoon saloon was going to do, with regard to a medieval structure, if they were able to bring together the tool sets you have, the mm -hmm. skill sets they have as animators, and the observation skills they've learned over the last four or five years, you could actually create a very authentic Irish animation around the built environment. There's a skill set about building a efficient, um, realistic props that come only comes only by diving into the heritage properties and by looking at what other people like yourselves has yeah. documented as being authentic. So I think it's important what you're doing and you're sharing it in a way that's really, that's really helpful. Yeah. Um, and well, they, did, they did actually do sketches in Roth House for Wolf Walker. So, yeah. tell, tell me what they did because the people listening to this call were trying to get a special preview of the entire film beamed yeah. into us. So tell, tell me what you saw the animators doing. Last year, I saw a preview of the movie that Tom Moore did in somewhere in Kilkenny, mm -hmm. and we did recognize some parts of the town. To be more precise, they just had sketch blocks, pads, and yeah, sketch some of the structures um, in Roth House, the archways and stuff like that. I guess because mm. I mean, all the previews I see, I'm, 
I'm not seeing the built environment. It's just seeing the wolf and the yeah. dynamic of the character. So maybe there's a third preview. It's two previews on Apple TV. It's because I mean, theoretically, see Cromwell's involved. I think he's voiced by Tommy Chairman. That, that means they probably should have done um, Canis's cathedral because that's yeah. where Cromwell's horses were stabled. And tell me what you do in the street with the handheld process you use to, to create these items of information on a map. I mean, are you just drawing them, snap yeah. them with a photo, um, with a <clears> device, <throat> recording the latitude and longitude? What's the process? So there are several apps that you can use to contribute to OpenStreetMap. Um, one is called Street Complete. You open it up and it shows you a map of where you are with the location thing. Um, and you can have different types of quests. It really depends on the level of mapping that's already been done, I, mm -hmm. I'd say. Um, but if you want to do that in Clunmel, please do. Um, it'll ask you what's the name of the street, for example, if, if the street doesn't have a name yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then if the streets are done already, it'll ask you about the house numbers. Um, and then once you have done the house number, so it goes into more more detail, the more you add. So after house numbers, it usually asks you how many levels the building has and then the roof shape. Um, and if it's, if there is a shop there, it might ask you for opening hours or stuff like that. So that's um, street complete. There's another one called OSM tracker, mm -hmm. which is really just a tracker. So um, you don't necessarily for an urban context, but you can use it for an urban context. It's more probably more useful for cycling tracks or uh, hiking or stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it tracks your GPS signal, not very well though, at least, at least not on my phone. Um, it's all over the place. Um, and you can add notes and take pictures and stuff like that. And you can upload those tracks to OpenStreetMap then for anyone to use um, or just privately. Okay. Um, that's another one. And then that's the tool I, I use anyway. And then there's um, a pillory, which is really a different kettle of fish, but very useful. It's like um, Google Street View. So because mm -hmm. OpenStreetMap is open source, um, we can't use any copyrighted material. So we can't go onto Google Street View and, you know, to check, mm. you know, what's this building called or is this actually a museum or is it uh, vacant or, you know, so that's not allowed because they have the copyright on, on their data. Uh, and one of the alternatives is Mapillary. It's a Swedish company. And what you do is you get the app on your phone and you walk around with your phone holding it up like this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to walk. You can mount it in your car or on your bike as well. So you walk around or drive around and you can set it to take a picture every five seconds, every two seconds. Or I think you can set it to a distance. And then it takes all these pictures every five seconds or whatever. And then uh, you upload it to mapillary.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will make a sequence like you see on, on Google Street View. And you can just click to, um, yeah. And you can use an external camera as well. Like some people use 3D cameras, like the Google uh, Street View car. Right. And you can mount it on, on the roof. If you have 3D, you would have to mount it on the roof of your car. Okay. And, and it takes um, 180 degrees to the front and 180 degrees to the back. Let, let me ask you some questions on this stuff. The, the street names that you have well spotted, the lack of street names, do you ever use the Ordnance Survey of Ireland? And because it's copyrighted. Okay. Um, Unless you have, you can't use the ones that are online because they have a co copyright on them. If you happen to have open um, ordnance survey, it's very confusing because the abbreviations are both OS. And if you have ordnance survey island maps from older than 50 years in print form, I think you're allowed to use them. Yeah. Um, do you use open GIS at all? Uh, not me personally. Okay, because they might that might get around the copyright issue. I believe there's a whole data set that's open to be used, free to use for the way you're using in a Wikimedia format. The mapping that you're using of streets and buildings and and house numbers, can you affix any kind of other data to them 
like could you affix any kind of media data you you, you can affix photos for example can on you... open street map you can't but there are uh, maps you can make a custom map on umap for example mm -hmm. and uh, it's umap dot openstreetmap.fr because it's a French uh, thing mm -hmm. but that's open source again so and it's relatively simple if you know a bit of um, like if you know how to do how to use html mm. you're probably going to be able to use that I've, I've used that for several custom made maps um, and you can upload pictures somewhere and link them there and if you click on a point on the map then what you have to define but you click on it and it opens a pop-up and you can have okay. um, any type of media really, as long as you can host it somewhere. You know? Okay. Do, do all the things you create with Mapillary, with OSN Tracker, do they <clears throat> allow you on a data point, a latitude and longitude, to grab an embed to take a, to get a snippet of HTML code that you can use somewhere else? Do you know? Because you gave me URLs that pop open in a tab a specific yeah. point that zooms in and in the case of what I was using in the Clon Mel. But yeah. do you are you aware of anything if you if you take and do a survey of a home, a house, yeah. perhaps a pub or a bakery uh, or a shop, is the resultant content you make em embeddable as an iframe or um it, it would you map it is? I think you might be able to uh, restrict the, the bounds of it. Good. I'm okay. not entirely sure. I've just started with a new technology. Well, it's new to me, Mapbox. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And you can certainly restrict the bounds of that. And uh, you can use um, JSON for that. Yeah. I'm, only, I'm only starting with it, so I'm not an expert. Um, and I, you can embed that, for example, in a WordPress. Yep. Yep. But all the JSON you've used to make nice pop-ups, you can't use on WordPress. Or I, I haven't found Good. out how to use them anyway. That's that's a bit of a shame. Can can you confirm that OSM Tracker and that Mapillary are apps that are on Android and iOS for me? Um, well, I have an Android phone, but I would presume yeah. um, Mapillary is certainly available for iOS because the developers used to work for Apple before. Yeah. Okay, give me one last idea here. How, what kind of battery drain are you looking at when you do this with your phone? Say that again. How hard is this on your battery of your oh, phone? Oh, it's very hard, but that might just be my phone. <laughs> okay, no, it's a lot of stuff that's going on. Well, I usually have a power bank with me and then I try to. Okay. Um, you know, if, if like for the Clon Mel project, um, I don't know if I mentioned that before. We met in Clonmel, about mm. seven of us um, mappers. Yeah. And we did the mapillary. So most of them drove around uh, the the estates, the, the industrial estate in the yeah. north. I can't remember the name of it, but it's you know right next to your campus. Yeah. Um, yeah. And some drove around mm. and some of them are quite narrow and you couldn't get a car into. It's not like in Kilkenny. Right. Um, um, there is very narrow and so so we walked uh, and tried to get those and I tried to get as many mm -hmm. of these um, heritage trail uh, panels for example good the, the um, things that you're doing are all available in the open source environment I try to hammer home the idea that you're actually using the Creative Commons copyright that's that's core to Wikimedia and to the open <coughs> yeah. source area so it's it's lovely you've been able to create this treasure trove of content uh, connecting all these objects together. Uh, I think it's important under this concept of open sharing uh, in a society that 3.0 that's evolving. You know, there will be re there will be major restrictions made on Google and Facebook in the next five years. Some mm -hmm. of it's about privacy, some of it's about monopoly interests, and some of it might be uh, there may be an incentive for Google to avoid billions of euro of fines by releasing yeah. elements of the Street View project to the open community. That'd be really nice to see. And I do know that there's a great interest in lots of uh, companies I talk to about using the skills you're talking about to create virtual guidebooks. You know, yeah. the, the nodes of information you're creating are good enough to be folded into 
um, electronic guidebooks for allowing to allow somebody to see into something that they can't get to because the door is closed or as they walk by or drive by to actually get a sense of the fabric of the society that that's around them. I think it's brilliant. And and you're doing all that. Um, What I like, I often, not often, but sometimes I get asked why, you know, do you get paid for it? No, I don't. Um, And then they say, but why would you do it? Mm. Um, (laughs) You know, I find it more important to, to contribute to something lasting that other people might benefit from. Um, I find it very reward, rewarding to in the OpenStreetMap community because they, we share a common interest. Yeah. Um, and they are, not all of them obviously, because you get all kinds, but they are very passionate about it and they, they do map every yeah. day, even though they have children. Like one of the mappers said, his son asked him, are you a dad or are you a mapper? So, you know, that's, that tells you the amount of mapping he does. I think it's, it's very important to have a purpose in life. And I just I want, just wanted to say that to the young people out there. Again, I don't want to sound patronizing, but I find like um, from not having a hobby or some purpose in life can be very depressing. And um, finding something that you can yeah. get passionate about, not just because you enjoy it, like playing music or drawing or but to have something that keeps you in contact with people that is actually social and not like this fake social of social media where you just get likes. For myself, I find that keeping yeah. busy like that and contributing. Like- There's a sense of community when you make and share things. And I know that uh, the campus and Clamel have a lot of people that just can see and hear and they can make things move to another place. They can make it more interesting, make it more more vivid. They can animate it. They can add sound design elements to it. And I think there's a whole call to action that exists around just things you walk past, heritage you see, observations you make, and you wonder, what is that? And knowing that you can actually add to the answer by just putting it on a map that somebody else can find and then add dimension to that map. But only by bringing together all the collections and adding it into a composite does all this make sense. So I'm hoping some of the people on the call actually may think, you know what, I want to try to do this as a project, a group project, animate or create another dimension of the local heritage around me, or perhaps even on a 100 hour work placement, dive into an element of this and and make it into something more vivid through a simple set of animated objects that are created to document what's in the Wikimedia or what's in the OpenStreetMap project already. Um, And I think as a mapper, you see the world different as well. I go places uh, because I look for benchmarks. Like St. Mary's Graveyard is like, was my favorite place in in Clonmel. It's just the the, the church is just so lovely and the the graveyard is so quiet. I mean, that's, you know, in the nature of a graveyard, Mm. but um, it's just, it's like a step back in time and and street, but um, because it's um, it's a completely Georgian street. If you imagine the car's gone, yeah, you should shoot well, movies there. Several yeah. of the homes on Ann Street overlooked the Quaker Cemetery because the homes were Quaker homes in yeah. the 1840s. I watched a home being renovated on Ann Street, and it's dramatic what's inside those homes. You're right, very very authentic. I really am happy with. Uh, you sharing what what we what you've done on uh, yeah. we'll contact you probably on LinkedIn and Instagram. Thanks for taking part and my respect for everyone who makes uh, who still continues going to college online yeah. and stuff. It must be so hard to to you know to get up in the morning and to actually log on and stuff. You like you must have very good self discipline. Yeah, it's it's um. It's a real program they're in. I mean, it's a proper honors degree program and you only get good when you keep doing and improving what you're taught. I am motivated by watching the people who are on this particular module I teach continue to engage. So part of that engagement is you folks being here to listen and to add to the mix. So thanks a million for doing that. And I do appreciate uh, all the stuff that you've, you've shared with us today.